Someone else say something. We hear you. We hear you. We hear you. We hear you, Tim. Okay. Time has arrived. Can I call this meeting to order of the Brockton Housing Authority? Tom, can you hear me all right? Yes. Chairman Timothy J. Sullivan, Vice Chairman Ernest Pettifer, Treasurer David Texera, Assistant Treasurer Carol Roberts, Member Janet Kraft, we'd like to welcome you to this regular meeting of the Brockton Housing Authority. The Brockton Housing Authority will meet virtually on Thursday, March 25th, 2021 at 2 o'clock. Due to social distancing guidelines related to the COVID-19 state of emergency, this meeting will be held remotely not at the Brockton Housing Authority offices. The public is invited to view and or listen to the meeting via phone, computer, laptop, or tablet. To do so, download the Zoom Cloud Meeting app in any app store or at www.zoom.us at two o'clock on March 25th, 2021. Click on to join a meeting and enter meeting ID number 820-0185. 8495 or use the link http double slash zoom.us forward slash i forward forward slash 82001858495. You may also join by calling conference line at 646 558 8656 at 2 p.m. on March 25th, 2021, and enter passcode. 8200185 followed by the pound sign. The board chair will instruct participants on appropriate time and manner for public comment during the meeting. As well, I got to read the, the governor's open meeting law. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12, 2020, Governor Charlie Baker issued an executive order Temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 20. Pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from open meeting laws requirements that meetings be held in public places, open and physically accessible to the public. So long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate and alternative means. I had to do, Tom, a roll call for the quorum. Yes. You, did, you do the regular roll call? Sure. <laughs> Timothy Sullivan? Here. Ernest Pettifer? Here. Janet Kraft? Here. David Texera? Here. Carol Roberts? Here. We have a quorum. If we could all rise for a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item one, roll call, Mr. Thibault. Commissioner Pettifed. Here. Commissioner Trask. Here. Commissioner Texera. Here. Commissioner Roberts. Here. And Mr. Chairman. Here. Item two, approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of February 25th, 2021. Item A in your packets, Mr. Thibault. I have had the opportunity to review the minutes. I have found them to be in order and I would recommend that they be adopted as written. We need a motion, item two. Motion to approve the minute of the regular meeting of February 25th, 2021, as written. Second. I'm not trying to be, was that Janet Trask, second? Yes. A motion has been made by Commissioner David Texera, seconded by Commissioner Janet Trask. Motion is to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of February 25th, 2021, as written. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, roll call, Mr. Thibault. Commissioner Pettifed. 
Yes. Commissioner Trask? Yes. Commissioner Texera? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. And Mr. Uh, Chairman? Yes. Oh, Item that? three, hearing of visitors. Any member of the public is invited to speak before the board. Visitors wishing to be heard will be allowed three minutes to speak on each subject. The board will take any issue under advisement and respond at a later date. Total time for the hearing of visitors will be limited to 15 minutes. Are there any hearing of visitors? Is there anybody who would like to speak at this time? Mr. Chairman, I've seen nobody unmuted. I don't see any guests that uh, would, would like to speak. Okay, hearing none. Item four, correspondence. Mr. Thibault. Uh, there are two pieces of correspondence in your uh, board packet. One is um, a thank you from the Census Bureau. We did work uh, closely with them to make sure that each and every one of the people who live with us uh, were counted. Uh, so that was very nice. And then um, there are also two letters regarding um, energy incentives that uh, Mr. Pacious and uh, a, a gentleman we work with, Richard Sisick, uh, have done a great job at uh, finding additional money for the housing authority. As you can see, the greater of the sum was $555,000. Um, this has uh, been paid to us. I believe this is the third year. Michael, tell me if I'm wrong. Um, but the first year they denied it to us. We appealed it. Uh, again, Michael and Mr. Sisic uh, helped out a great deal on that. And uh, it's a tremendous amount of money that we're using to uh, supplement the operations of the authority. So I thought that uh, the board should be aware of, aware of the additional funds coming in. I just wanted to say, Mr. Thibault, it was a nice job. By my, I heard you say Michael Pace, I don't know who else was involved. But a half a million dollars is always grateful to be, to be received. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> yes, Richard Sissick was also a big part of it. So uh, um, he, he gets a lot of the credit. We don't know who he is, Michael, but we'll give it to you. We'll do you a favor. We won't introduce you to him. He'll, he'll, right. he'll, he'll make a three-hour presentation. He, <laughs> he made Arias bleed with this, these numbers, but it was worth every dime of it. Yeah. yeah. Any Thanks. questions on the correspondence from anybody? Hearing none. Item five. Approval of the bill to the regular meeting of March 25th, 2021. Item B in your packet. Commissioner Texera. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I did have a chance to review the bill and uh, we had a couple of questions that was asked. And there's a couple more questions that uh, the director, Mr. Thibault, will get back to us. But everything seems to be in order, so I will make the motion. I will make the motion to the bill of the regular meeting of March 2025 as present. Is that the motion? Yeah. Yes. Second. Was that second, Carol Roberts? Yes. I saw. It's hard to hear. Sorry. Uh, a motion has been made by Commissioner David Dextera, seconded by Commissioner Carol Roberts. Motion is to approve the bill for the regular meeting of March 25th, 2021, as presented. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none. Roll call, Mr. Thibault. Commissioner Pettiford? Yes. Commissioner Trask? Yes. Commissioner Texera? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. And Mr. Chairman? Yes. <clears throat> Item 6, authorization to prepare and submit applications to the Brockton Redevelopment Authority for CDBG funding for Kennedy Drive, Exhibit C in the packets. Mr. Thibault? Uh, if you remember uh, back last spring, we submitted an application to the Department of Housing and Community Development to redo the community room and, and create some uh, usable space that uh, will engage the residents at Kennedy Drive. Uh, as part of that, we solicited the support of the city uh, and they, in uh, spirit, obligated, said they would uh, uh, support the grant to the amount of $100,000. Uh, now the funds are available. The Housing Authority has to submit an application. I have provided that to you. 
Um, it is due next week, um, but uh, we do have to have a vote of the board authorizing the submission of uh, this application. Um, I'm excited about it, just to remind you, um, we're looking to create a space where we can have many social programs over at Kennedy Drive. We would like to tie the courtyard in there. Um, and uh, we've got, there are a number of uh, uh, handicapped accessibility issues. The bathrooms are not accessible. The kitchen is not accessible. Uh, so it really will be a nice uh, addition for those people who have lived with a, a, a really subpar community room for years. We need a motion, item six, from anybody. You don't have to read the whole thing. All you have to do is say it's so moved, because I'll read it up. So moved. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Janet Trask, seconded by Commissioner Carol Roberts. Motion is to authorize Thomas Tebow as Executive Director of the Brockton Housing Authority to prepare and submit an application to the Brockton Redevelopment Authority we requesting $100,000 to remove architectural barriers from the community room at Kennedy Drive, low-income, elderly, and disabled complex. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, roll call, Mr. Thibault. Uh, Commissioner Pettison. Yes. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Texera. Yes. And Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Oh, Commissioner and, and Mr. Chairman, I apologize. Yes. Motion carries unanimous. Item seven. Appointment can, of scattered site portfolio manager, exhibit D in your packets. Can I just about ask a question about um, our last um, agenda item? The aesthetic things that we'll be doing there. That's covered by the $100,000 also? There's $500,000 in the grant. And so this is an additional 100,000. This 100,000 can only be used for the architectural access issues, but the other issue, the other money can be used uh, as determined by the residents and the, the engagement group we have. Okay. Huh? Thank you. Any other questions, item six? Back on to item seven, appointment of scattered site portfolio manager, exhibit D in your packets, Mr. Thibault. If I could ask Mr. Pluff to speak on this, please. Thank you, Mr. Thibault. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, several months ago, you prom promoted Bruna Campbell to a new position that we had created in the uh, Section 8 Rental Assistance Department as a landlord participant facilitator to uh, engage landlords, to get more landlords uh, into our Section 8 program and to help those that are having trouble finding apartments, uh, to help them find apartments. So that left a vacancy in the affordable housing department um, as the, we'll call it asset manager of the affordable housing department, those 100 units. Uh, we published in the paper, posted internally, we received a number of uh, applications, including two internal applications. Uh, the selection committee uh, consisting of myself, the uh, maintenance supervisor for the affordable housing program and uh, Ms. Campbell um, reviewed the cover letters and resumes, uh, conducted a first set of interviews and then a second set of interviews and after that, we decided that uh, Ms. Ava Hewitt, a uh, employee of the Brockton Housing Authority would be a great fit. Um, as you can see from her resume, she's been employed here full time for a couple of years. She was Mr. Hines administrative assistant uh, with Mr. Hines retirement. Um, she is looking for other opportunities here at the Housing Authority. Um, you can see that she's got a bachelor's degree, a master's in law, that while here at the Housing Authority, she has taken every opportunity to uh, take classes and better herself 
uh, through learning about uh, housing authorities. Uh, this isn't where uh, she was previously. As you can also see from her resume, she's been a, uh, a police constable and detective constable in Jamaica and Bermuda, uh, but now lives here in Brockton uh, with her daughter. Uh, is very excited uh, since uh, the interview process. Uh, she has been uh, meeting with us virtually, uh, trying to uh, learn more about the job and she's uh, been doing a, a, a great job learning. Um, so we, we can recommend uh, Ms. Hewitt uh, wholeheartedly uh, for this position. I think she'll do a great job making sure that our affordable housing properties are the best house on the street and that our tenants make sure that they keep it up that way. I'd just like Ava. to add, don't go, I'm sorry. Ava, could I ask how to pronounce your first name? You fool. Ava, you're muted. Ava Sonjia. Ava Sonjia, okay. She goes by Ava. Ava. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. And a Ava has worked at, on a number of projects. Uh, she was instrumental when she started uh, with Mr. Hines in putting together some reporting on work orders and assisted Mr. Hines and Mr. De Christopher uh, in providing information to drive that down, drive those numbers down. That required a lot of uh, analysis of our very cumbersome ho housing software at times. And uh, she did a great job uh, working on that. And uh, she also uh, has been working with procurement, which is a huge issue uh, and becoming a bigger issue altogether. So she's she's made herself very valuable in many facets of the authority, and I'm sure she'll go on to do the same thing for affordable housing. A very impressive resume, Ava. Thank you. Um, we need a seven. Just, Mr. Chairman, if I could just add one more thing. Um, as you can see that... Um, uh, the motion has uh, Ms. Hewitt starting at, at step five and not step one. And the reason for that is, is that this position is really um, a backwards position in our hierarchy in the union, but uh, she'll still lose a little bit of money, but uh, we're trying to soften the blow. Okay. We need a motion item seven from anybody. Okay, motion to appoint Ava Hewitt to the position of scatter site portfolio manager, effective March 29th, 2021, at the 2021 step rate of 53,330 per annum. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Cal Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Janet Trask. Motion to appoint Ava Sanjaya Hewitt to the position of Scattered Site Portfolio Manager, effective March 29, 2021, at the 2021 Step 5 rate of $53,330 per annum. Any questions on the motion? No. Tim, before we take a vote, can I just say to Ava, I read that resume of yours, and that's a motivation resume. That really is. It is. It is. And um, to do all that you did, uh, I, mean, I have to say kudos, girl. And University of Gloucester. Yeah. I assume that's England, is it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> England. <laughs> wow. Yes. Heart Heart Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome, hon. Any other questions, item seven? Roll call, Mr. Tebow. Commissioner Pettiford. Yes. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Texera. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. And Mr. Chairman. Yes. Congratulations. Normally, Ava, you would come up and shake our hands, but because of COVID-19, we can't do that. But you're welcome to stay and finish the meeting. 
Thank you. Or you can go back to work. <laughs> back to work. Back to work. Now that you're working for me, now you can go back to work. Thank you. Ava, is that your boss? Yes, he is. Ava. Yes, sir. Just let me say one thing. I, I say, it, say it to everybody who, who starts brand new with the housing. And I know you're not brand new. You've been here before. We consider the tenants as number one. And we were well aware that they can have a bad day and strike back at you with bad language and everything else. But we consider our tenants as number one. And the reason is, if we don't have the tenants, they don't need us and we don't need you. Will you keep that in mind? Oh, definitely, I have and I always will. And welcome aboard. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Item eight. A ward of contract, legal services, legal counsel to the Board of Commissioners and Executive Director. Exhibit E in your packets, Mr. Tebow. If I could ask Mr. Pluff to speak on this, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Tebow. Uh, good afternoon, members of the board. Uh, as part of our uh, continuing effort to make sure our procurements are up to snuff, um, it was we discovered it was time to go out again for our uh, lawyer to do board matters, uh, labor matters, uh, matters with the uh, executive director. Uh, over the last several years, we've had two firms that we used, um, Murphy, Hesse, Toomey, and Lahane, and Clark, Balboni, and Gilday. We would use each of them depending on uh, the expertise needed. Um, we had done, we went out uh, for an RFP, which is a request for proposals in which we weigh the qualifications of the uh, firms um, before opening the price. And so that we're, we're looking for qualifications more than price. Um, however, uh, the two firms that we had used were the only two firms that had applied um, for this type of work. It's sort of specialized work. Um, as Mr. Chairman knows from the uh, school committee, uh, the labor for public employees to find the lawyers to do that. It, it's sort of specialized work. Uh, and so that we're getting somebody who knows what they're doing. So um, both of them uh, interviewed very well and uh, they're Prices were uh, competitive and uh, within the range. Uh, before we do this type of procurement under federal law, we have to do what's called an independent cost estimate. And uh, I did that by calling around to other housing authorities, emailing, seeing what they were paying for labor lawyers. And then I uh, took what their current fees were and uh, use the inflation factors based upon the Department of Labor inflation uh, and came up with what's called an independent cost estimate, which would give us the range of where uh, the fees should be for these lawyers. And so both of them came in with very good proposals and uh, we are recommending that we, we stay with the two lawyers we've been using uh, after doing our uh, public procurement process. We need a motion item. The motion is we so move. Second. Who made the second? I didn't get that. I did. Commissioner Texas. David. Yes. Motion has been made by Commissioner Ernest Pettiford. Seconded by Commissioner David Texera. Motion is to authorize the executive director to enter, enter into three year contracts with Murphy, Hesse, Toomey, and Lahane, LLP, and Shannon Resnick, PC, DBA, Clark, Balboni, and Kilday for legal services to the Board of Commissioners and to the executive director in accordance with the proposal submitted. Any questions? on item eight. I haven't got a question, I just wanted to make a comment. 
at one of those firms that Murphy, Hesse, Toomey, and Lehane also works for the uh, city of Brockton, Brockton Public Schools, and they, they do a good job there. Everybody seems to be real happy with them. Hearing no questions, a roll call, Mr. Tebow. The Commissioner Pettifed. Yes. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Texera. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. And Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion carries unanimous. Item nine, approval of amendments to the Brockton Housing Authority's Admissions and Continued Occupancy Policy, ACOP, Exhibit F in your packets, Mr. Tebow. If I could ask Mr. Pluff and or Mrs. Rose to speak on this item. Thank you, Mr. Tebow. I'll start and if the, uh, the board has any more technical questions, uh, uh, Mrs. Rose can fill in. I, I know this from a, a thousand feet up and she knows all the details that I don't know. So um, it's time for us to uh, open up our federal family housing list. Um, it hasn't been open in a number of years. Uh, which is great news. Um, and the other thing, so we need to, to tell the board that and we're going to publish and do everything that the ACOP says we're going to do. Uh, but what we're going to do is move into the 21st century and start to take applications electronically. Um, the ACOP admissions and continued occupancy policy didn't envision that the last time it was written. So um, people being able to uh, go on their smartphones and apply or being able to apply from their computer or computer from somebody at a shelter, somebody helping them. So uh, we needed to make a number of changes uh, in the ACOP. I've laid them out uh, as part of the exhibit, uh, which parts we were striking and where we were, we were adding uh, language but basically what we're doing is we're opening up the wait list we're going to do it electronically we're going to have a lottery and once the lottery is over we're going to leave the wait list open the housing authority always had closed the wait list the family federal wait list people are in such need we'd open it up there'd be lines around the block and we would get so many applications that we'd have to close it because the people after that initial surge would never would never reach them, but and so we'd take applications and people would just wait on the wait list. But this way, we're doing it electronically. It's easier for the people applying. It's easier for our staff, and we'll be able to manage the wait list. So, and we're going to also be. Uh, uh, I believe, and Mrs. Rose can correct me, um, moving next to the uh, federal fan, um, elderly disabled wait list and move that also electronically. So then all of our wait lists will be able to be accessed electronically. I mean, you still can get a paper one if you have to and mail it in, but then you'll be able to check on your wait list where you are electronically on your computer. So, did I get everything One question, Mr. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Federal family, where do they go? Where do they live? Federal family is uh, Crescent Court, Hill Street, uh, Roosevelt Heights. Okay. And the other question, how long has it been closed on? Tremita? Um, it's been closed for, I want to say about um, eight years, about eight years. Wow. Okay. I got a question. Mr. Yes, Commissioner. Commissioner. Uh, Yes, uh, you mentioned lottery. So <clears throat> to apply for the lottery, what about if you got your application already in the section eight? 
Can you pull up and reapply so you will get the pool of the lottery? Oh, yes, this is not Section 8. These are our buildings. So if you have an application in on Section 8, that application will still stay there and you'll remain in place on the Section 8 wait list. If you want to live in one of our buildings, which is completely different, as you know, from a Section 8 where you can go anywhere in the country with it, mm -hmm. if you want to live in one of our buildings, you would have to uh, fill out this application. And we're going to advertise uh, in the uh, paper with the Cape Verdean Association. Um, where else, Tremita? Um, there's a, a Spanish Association and um, Bruna and Diana was gonna check on, um, I'm sorry, um, uh, the Haitian Coalition. So, and then we'll reach out to like Father Bills, we'll reach out to, um, I have a couple of contact people over at the school department um, that work with families that are in need of housing because of the kids um, in the school system. So legal and the services. mayor's so we website. Have a whole list of We're going to make a me? broad, we can do that. We're going to make a broad push. So, so mm -hmm. the city hall uh, mayor's website. Yeah, we can do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tremita, one yes. question. Sure. Is there a lot of openings for families right now? Is that why this has come up? Yes. Um, right now, we've um, gone through a lot of the applicants on our wait list. So um, when people do apply, there, there should be a couple of units that, that would be open and ready to um, tenant. Okay. Okay. We need a motion yeah. item nine. Item nine. Tremita, uh, Tremita do, do Brockton families get priority? Yes, they do. Brockton residents will go before non resident. We need a motion item nine. Is all you have to say is so moved. I'll read it off. So move. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Janet Trask. Motion is to amend the Brockton Housing Authority's admissions and continued occupancy policy governing HUD-assisted public housing as follows. By striking Section 2B, availability of applications in its entirety, inserting a new Section 2B in its place by striking the third paragraph of Section 3A and inserting a new paragraph in its place and by striking the second paragraph in section 3B and inserting a new paragraph in its place as a text. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, roll call, Mr. Tebow. Commissioner Pettiford. Yes. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Texera. Yes. And Commissioner Roberts. Yes. And Mr. Chairman. Yes. Thank you very much. Motion carries unanimous. Item 10, a water contract. On-call roofing repairs. Exhibit G in your packets. Mr. Tebow. Yes, if I could ask Mr. De Christopher to speak on this item. Good afternoon, thank you. Um, this contract is for on-call roofing repairs on February 17th, 2021. Brockton Housing Authority advertised for quality roofing companies for on-call roofing repairs that cannot be done, performed by our current staff. This work was to be awarded to two responsive and responsible bidders that meet the qualifications set in the bid plan. This is a three-year contract, not to exceed a limitation amount of $150,000 over the duration of the contract. On March 4th, 2021, the submission deadline, we received two bids as reflect as we collected in the bid tally sheet. The low responsive bidders were Gibson Roofing of uh, Hanover, Mass, and Corolla Contracting of Winthrop, Mass. Bids were advertised in Central Register, Combis, and the Enterprise. Three companies received bid packs. They were Gibson Roofing, Corolla Contracting, and Farika Construction of West Bridgewater. Two bids were received back and they were Gibson Roofing and Corolla Contracting. So I would recommend that we approve Gibson Roofing and Corolla contracting, seeing that they were the only two bids we received. We need a motion item 10 from anybody. 
So moved. Move. Second it. A motion has been made by Commissioner David Texera, seconded by Commissioner Ernest Pettifit. Motion is to award a three-year contract for the amount not to exceed $150,000 to Gibson Roofing of Hanover, Mass., and Corolla Contracting of Winthrop, Mass., for on-call roofing repairs. Any questions on the motion? I had one, Benny. What are you going to just alternate back and forth with those two? Yes, we rotate them. We rotate all our contractors. And we keep track Any other of questions? A roll call, Mr. Tebow? Commissioner Pettifet? Yes. Commissioner Trask? Yes. Commissioner Texera? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. And Mr. Chairman? Yes. Item 11. A water of contract, legal services, tenant grievances, and evictions. Exhibit H in your packets. Mr. Tebow? If I could ask uh, Mr. Pluff to speak on this, please. Thank you, Mr. Tebow. Uh, members of the board, good afternoon again. Uh, as I said on the previous procurement, we're trying to get everything up to, up to speed and, and correct. Um, the lawyers for evictions has not gone out in a while, uh, working with uh, Mr. Patius in the finance department, the rent department, and with Mr. Sheedy uh, representing asset management. Um, we put out a request for proposals. Um, we received um, four uh, back. Um, and we scored those proposals based upon the qualifications called for in the request for proposals. Um, and the two firms that we use now came in the highest. And, and I think it's probably because they're used to dealing with housing authorities. Um, as, as we all know, uh, you know, when you first come here, you think you know what a housing authority is all about. And the more you learn, the more you know you didn't know. Um, and it, it's difficult. I, I see it uh, with regular lawyers. You, if you don't know what we're doing. Uh, the federal regulations are different, the state regulations, the things we have to do uh, to move somebody on is much harder than a, a, a private landlord. Um, but uh, after reviewing that, uh, we'd recommend that we keep um, Clark Balboni and Gilday and Turk and Keanu as our lawyers, um, the staff has been very happy with them. Mr. Pacius can speak about that. Um, and they were uh, the two most responsive, scored the highest, and I believe were the uh, two lowest bidders also. And how long have we had them, Tom, hmm? as our um, at least seven years. So if I can, I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit. Uh, Clark Belboni and Gilday for 30 years. They were not just that firm, it's evolved, but they've been involved with us since I've been here. Uh, Turk and Keanu, they've been with us uh, a shorter period of time. Both um, know the law well, uh, but they also understand our mission, which is impossible. There are a lot of landlords out there who look for um, real, I'll call them shocks, right? Go out there person hasn't paid your rent, the person's causing problems, get rid of them as quickly as possible. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for people who bring the uh, case to resolution using all levers that are available to us um, so that we don't end tendencies unless it's absolutely necessary. So uh, that's where I, I think they, they know the law, they can do what they need to do, but they also understand the other part of our mission, which is very important. I had one question, Mr. Tebow, up look, which has it opened up by the state for evictions? Not yet. Well, okay. it, you, you can go to court. They're not throwing anybody out. <laughs> uh, you can file the court. You know, we do have some, you know, some.
cases, they're not related to rent where people have done some things that um, really need to be addressed uh, for the safety of our residents. Um, but uh, again, nobody's getting asked to leave by the courts. Okay. We need a motion, item 11, from anybody? So moved. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Janet Trapp, seconded by Commissioner Ernest Pettipin. Motion is to authorize the Executive Director of the Brockton Housing Authority to enter into a three-year contract with Clark, Balboni, and Gilday, and with Turk and Quijano LLP for legal services for tenant grievances and tenant evictions in accordance with the proposal submitted. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, roll call, Mr. Tebow. Commissioner Pettifin. Yes. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Texera. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. And Mr. Chairman. Yes. Item 12, Executive Director's Report. Exhibit I in your packets, Mr. Tebow. I'd like to touch upon a couple of things. One, uh, we, as you see, there's going to be more and more procurement. Uh, over the years, uh, especially on these small procurements, uh, the standard operating procedure may have been to call your local vendor and get a, a, a quote and then move on. But as we do more and more business, you, you pass the thresholds of being able to do business that way, and it becomes extremely expensive. Uh, as Mr. Uh, um, Christopher can tell you, the cost of our flooring has almost tripled. Um, but we're doing it in compliance with procurement law, and we are required to do that. I just want the board should know that as we go through doing procurement and the public is more expensive. You hear it all the time in the newspapers. You hear um, about um, sometimes the agencies trying to get a, uh, an exemption to do some things because it is expensive. Um, but we are making sure we're compliant there. Uh, as far as the operations go, I have to really throw out the, the we do the simplest things. We have to do the simplest things now um, if we're going to be successful. And uh, Mr. DeChristopher and his crew doing vacancy preparation uh, really is extraordinary. We're, we're being overwhelmed. I think we're over 40 vacants for this month alone. 38, I think the last one I looked. 38? Um, so it, it's, it's, it's going up and up. Uh, but they're preparing them. Tenant selection is doing a, a fabulous job. Uh, one of the staff members down there has stepped forward and said, look, I'll, I'll work alongside the person who usually shows the apartment so we can double up on that. They've been working on the weekends. They've also been sending over uh, the names of people to uh, the rental assistance department, which is a tremendous amount of work. And we're leasing up units. So if we don't do that, right, if we don't uh, house people, regardless of the pandemic, then we're not doing our job. And, and those three departments and with the support of the others has really uh, done a fabulous job. And then uh, thinking about the maintenance crew, going back to last March, uh, we were lucky we had just done a mold job. And so we had some N95 masks. We had enough to give each man, and it was all exclusively men at the time, uh, who were working, I'm sorry, men and women, uh, one mask. And they wore those masks for three or four weeks. I remember seeing the guys come out of the uh, trash room down here at um, Manning Towers. They look like miners. You know, at the end of the day, the miners come out and they just black all over from the soot. That's what their masks look like. But they just kept doing it and doing it. They kept repairing the, uh, uh, what we needed to do. It really is something that at some time we're going to have to recognize how special some people stepped up. And I have individual stories, too, that uh, really are, are heroic if you, if you take a look at it. Um, mm -hmm. And this is not for people who did not know what was happening. This is people who had people in their family sick. At times, they themselves get sick. They lost loved ones uh, to a pandemic, and they just kept going. Uh, so it really is uh, I'm, I'm proud to be associated with it. Um, rent collections. This time of year, rent collections always gets a little better because everybody gets their, uh, their tax returns. Uh, they, they give us a call and they, they try to catch up. So that's happening. And then there is some money in uh, the new um, stimulus that's available to our residents. It's, it's not clear exactly how it's going to be made available, um, but it hopefully will help out a lot of uh, people.
people in the community, not only with us, but in the community. And then I also, you know, it's important that the landlords get their cash also, because a lot of our, our landlords in the city are, you know, owners of a three family or a two family. They're, they're not, you know, they don't own 600, 700 units. They uh, buy a place, they maintain it, and they, they provide a nice place for people to live. So it, that's uh, hopefully being taken care of. Um, I think I told you FEMA has opened up and looks at Michael's continue to push on them. They're awful slow getting an answer is, uh, we, you know, we'd like to get $100,000 from them, $102,000. Um, and, and Chris uh, Barry and his crew, uh, you're going to see a lot of work going on there through this period of time. He's been pushing, pushing, pushing. I had a, a meeting this morning with the state and they were talking about, you know, housing authorities not spending as much money as they should because of the pandemic. Well, that hasn't been an issue here. And Chris has got money flying out the door. We're going to be doing all the windows at Crosby Gardens, which is so necessary. We've got the boilers done at, uh, um, where are the boilers at Ann Ward House, Chris? Are they just about done? Yeah, uh, they're they're up and waiting for the boiler to come in and start put, putting them in. So Okay. Close. They're, they're also doing a project on the windows over there as well. Right, windows are going to be replaced there. Uh, we're working on Kennedy Drive. So there's a lot of stuff happening and then, we're still pushing to get, um, you know, all the all the money in for Campello, which will be a, a couple more years. But we are moving. There's a lot getting done. Um, the as you see, we've plateaued. We we had saw a real reduction in um, COVID cases. It's sort of stopped now. It just plateaued. We are doing all work orders. We started doing that this Monday. Before that, we were doing just emergencies, but we've seen the cases come way down. And today we did over. Um, Eight, we did 88 uh, vaccinations at Sullivan Towers. It's bringing, brought us over 1,300 vaccinations. Um, so, and that's moving along. The mayor contacted me today and asked if we could do something over at Crescent Court, um, apparently uh, as of about April 22nd, not as um, that, that will open up. So uh, the city has really been working closely with us to make sure that uh, vaccinations are available to our residents. Uh, so, yeah, that's, as I said, the only thing that I can say I have liked about this pandemic is coming to the end and seeing how happy and uh, how motivated people are to work to help each other out uh, in getting this done. That's my report. Any questions? Item 12. Is there a problem getting supplies? You read about this everywhere, too, that, that things just aren't coming like they used to it takes months to get appliances and whatever else yeah we ha we've had to leave a couple of units vacant for um, a period of time uh, because we didn't have stoves and refrigerators but uh, mr de christopher was able to uh you know make some more phone calls and, and use multiple vendors uh we usually use uh general electric and they bring it by the trailer load in but we couldn't they were way back load uh, back ordered and so we used a local vendor, George Washington Toma. Good. Uh, but they, they ran out soon too. Hmm. So, uh, you know, but it is, how are we now on that, Mr. De Christopher? We're good on the stoves and refrigerators, but there is a back order on the uh, wall ovens, it's, it, which is actually tying up uh, one of my ADA units. But they do it in mid-April. I just got an email during this, um, yeah. during this meeting. It did. Uh, my... Uh, I ordered a chair for my living room that in November. It's coming in June. So, wow. I didn't so I get bought a, Yeah, go on. I bought a refrigerator at George Washington Toma, September 11th. It wasn't in stock, and I still haven't received it. The only good thing is they gave me a loan up. Because mine complete, mine left. It, it's gone. My completely gone. The refrigerator. So they gave me a, it looks like an apartment size Brockton housing refrigerator. They let me use it till the ads come in. Luckily I have that, but I have been waiting since September 11th. Yeah. How, how is the uh, local furniture uh, uh, business, Mr. Commissioner Texera? Is there a delay there? You're muted. No, you're muted, uh, Commissioner. So we all in the same boat. It's appliance, furniture, even here at the mattress maker to get the supplies. It's it's so hard, you know. Nobody has nothing. 
but well, you got to be patient. Well, hopefully it'll break through because and there's been a lot of pent up uh, um, demand and everybody get these $14 checks, $1,400 checks will go out and start spending them at the local businesses. Yeah, but it's the demand from overseas. Yeah. We need a motion item 12 from anybody? So move. And a second. Second it. A motion has been made by David Tex Commissioner David Texera, seconded by Commissioner Ernest Pettivitt. Motion is to accept the executive director's report for March 25th, 2021, and put on file. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, roll call. Commissioner Pettifin. Yes. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Texera. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. And Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion carries unanimous. Item 13, old business. I have one question on old. The application for that Campello High Rise A and B building, is that moving forward? Or? It is, I worked on it for about uh, two hours this morning, two hours last night, uh, but it will, we'll get it done. And uh, it, it's, it's very precise, Mr. Chairman, and we wanna make sure it's perfect. Um, it, it, the way you have to divide it up and send it in is, is a real bear, but yeah, we're moving on it. It looks, I actually had a meeting, Mr. Pluff and I had a meeting uh, with HUD on the same concept. Uh, they're very anxious to, to get going on some of these things. They understand how much uh, the portfolio needs this capital money to make it more of a livable place. Any other questions on under old business? I just wanted to say what a great job David Texera did on the Metro South program that they did a few weeks ago. And he made us proud and, and he did uh, a remarkable job talking about his business and what they do. So thank you, David. Thank you, Commissioner Janet Thrush. Very nice, very nice. Any other items on the road business? Hearing none, item 14, new business. Any new business? Is there an item of, for monkey business? Is that in there? You skip that one. <laughs> item 15, we need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second it. Don't leave. We got to do a roll call. Okay. A motion has been made by Commissioner Dana Trapp, seconded by Commissioner David Texera, to adjourn. A roll call, Mr. Thibault. Commissioner Pettifin. Yes. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Texera. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. And Mr. Chairman. Yes. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. I I thought they would That's make right. a motion that our next meeting would happen down in Florida in the, on the island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess not. All right. All right. Bye, thank you. Yeah.